another one, the MT Tura 2, uh, with uh, 150,000 metric tons. Uh, to put it clearly, that is about 1,600,000 barrels. And that amounts to well over a hundred million dollars, which runs into billions of Naira. That is the amount uh, or the value of what was inside there. It takes uh, a while to load the whole of that volume. And so definitely it must have been loaded somewhere that is an authorized loading bay. And so the authorities of NNPC were supposed to know, and I think they know. And then, of course, usually in all of those places, there are law enforcement, you know, at the terminus or the terminals. So definitely all of these agencies knew that this was taking place. You can imagine a group of persons were taking away what Nigeria produces in a day in one ship. And the Nigerian authorities want to pretend that they don't know who are doing it. They don't know the terminal where it was, it was, it was uh, uh, loaded. Uh, of course, you may also go, need to go and read the book, The Riddle of the Oil Thief. The whole story is there. It's a riddle. It's a game where you distract the entire world to believe in that someone else is the one that is stealing the oil when the main man is feeding fat and, and walking about free. Why should that vessel be set ablaze? The reason is obvious. So that they don't get to the big men who are behind oil theft in Nigeria. This is a good example to tell the entire country that the oil thieves are big men, big enough. International governments, governments of foreign countries are involved, NNPC is involved, and many more are involved. If the president is ready to stop oil thievery, it will stop. If it does not stop, it is because he doesn't want it to stop. So it is when that desire to stop it comes, that technology and every other thing will follow. I mean, two weeks is too much. Two weeks is actually too much if the matching orders are given, I can bet you.